here we have 10 more pieces of amber from the Cretaceous period and in these 10 pieces we have at least 13 inclusions, meaning some of these are multi-inclusion pieces. The good news is uh, most of these pieces are quite very clear and uh, light ye yellow color, meaning we probably will get some decent pictures and won't have a lot of issues with the lighting the pieces when we will take the pictures. The bad news are most of these insects are truly tiny, like 2 millimeters, uh, 3 millimeters, and some are even smaller, like 1 millimeter. So yeah, uh, we will face some issues. Uh, and uh, sometimes I'm getting questions what kind of setup I'm using for my macro photography and so <laughs> it's very simple, simple really. You don't need even a lot of investment to start making pictures like I do. What I have here is a digital microscope, the most important part of taking pictures obviously. And then I use two simple LED lights and finally I use a mirror to get some soft light from beneath the piece uh, and let's see how it works together. Now, let's take our first, first piece, which I already showed you. And I think this is a cockroach of, um, of some sorts. Yep, uh, yeah, let's mount it under the microscope. And next, what we will need... Yes, next what we need is to put this LED light. And what we will do with this LED light, we need to put it in here, but because I don't have anything professional uh, for this matter, I will use these two books. <laughs> to put it right here and light on top of them. And then if we need any more light, we can dismount this tiny LED light, open it up and light it even more on whatever side we need. Yes, so let's go and make some pictures for this baby. First pictures I would call a success. I did some softer upgrades, focus stacking and noise removal and enhanced the resolution of the pictures. And yep, this is definitely a juvenile cockroach doesn't have wings yet and measures around 3 mm in body length. We got quite nice details out of this piece. Juveniles are hard to ID to specific family, so we'll leave it as just a cockroach nymph. The juvenile cockroach. And guess what else do I have? I believe I have a adult cockroach, but it's tiny adult, so I'm not sure what kind of species this is gonna be. wings are clearly visible, so this is for sure a adult specimen of a cockroach. Visually, it looks like the most common modern roaches, which is so-called German cockroaches, the ones you can find in your kitchen. Except the German cockroach adults measure around 1.5 cm, and this one is less than half of that size, around 6 mm, so I don't know the exact species, too bad from the other side, amber layer distorts the view of the head. Yep, clearness of this piece made for photography easy for this cockroach, and the fact that it's preserved so nicely, bonus. Okay, let's let's take a challenge for this next one. Yeah, this tiny triangular piece with barely visible with naked eyes insect. No idea what kind, and it's so tiny that <laughs> I don't know if my mighty digital microscope will able to capture this one.
Let's try to mount it from the front. Oh, 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 what's gonna happen? I have no idea. Truly, truly. Yeah, let's take aim. Look, it looks already quite blurry, even from farther away. I'm guessing that we might have a preservation issues with this one. Huh. Maybe some additional light? No, not helping. Let's try the light under it. Yep, I think that works. Hmm, don't know what is this. Maybe even closer. Not entirely sure what this insect is. It's poorly preserved and super tiny. Couldn't get any picture of it. I've got suggestion from my friend that it could be a scale insect from super family Cocoidea. But that's just a guess. Let's move to the other pieces. Yep, so whatever it was, I think it was issues related to the preservation of the insects. It's quite transparent, so, and the combination that it's so tiny, uh, yeah, it, this was a, too tough for me, my skills, and probably my equipment. Either way, let's take something nice next. But, uh, what should it be? Let's try this one. This one is super clear piece. I expect something nice out of this one. Gentlemen and um, gentle ladies, this piece did not disappoint. I've got my good pictures for this cricket. What's more important is this is Elcanidaea cricket. It went extinct in the Cretaceous period. It has these distinct petals on the legs, which helps me to identify them. So that's cool, and what else is cool is the preservation of the specimen. Does it look 100 million years old to anyone ever? It looks still kicking in there, insanely preserved. The details, all the hairs on the body, magnificent. Dude, this one is freaking fantastic. I'm not even sure if it's truly dead inside in there. It looks freaking alive. The, the preservation was insane. All this, all the hair on the body, everything is so nicely visible, even though this booger is like two, two and a half millimeters across. This one is insane. And with this one, let's take another tiny booger, maybe this one. Once again, super duper tiny, but it's probably a cricket <laughs> again. Yep, a cricket again, but very different species, some sort of Orthoptera. I tried to get identification for the species, but failed to do so before releasing this video live. It looks nice, good details. A bit darker piece, but photos turned out not terrible. Some more light on the head would be nice. Yep, even though this one is tiny, uh, it's a lot better preserved than that uh, other tiny insect, so we didn't have any problems with the picture for this one. Next might be one of the best from today. Or maybe the best. Insane. This is a very good specimen, it's commonly known as a cicada. Some people call them plant hoppers or their leaf hoppers. This specific insect is called Cixidae. It looks really nicely preserved. Check out these black round spots on the wings. Usually this does not preserve the pattern on the wings. Colors are gone, but the pattern did preserve, which is really uncommon. Gorgeous specimen. And there we go, best cicada in my collection so far. The fact that the pattern on the wings did preserve, even though it's like <laughs> preserved as a black dots, it's super rare. Patterns usually does not preserve on the wings. 
fantastic specimen, lovely cicada, best cicada in my collection to date. And you know what I like uh, other than insects in amber? That's right, I love plants. And this one is a very nice plant. Yeah. But the pictures probably won't be any good, so it's better to admire it as it is from the phone camera, not under the microscope, because the plants are usually not well preserved. Now, let's take another challenge. Another challenge is another truly tiny piece of ember with even smaller insect. Barely visible. Yeah, can we make picture for this one, I wonder. Yep, uh, it is a cricket again. Very tiny cricket, but similar as the last tiny inclusion, this one once again have issues with the preservation. Yeah, I can't get any details out of it. Not much to say here, it's heavily oxidized cricket larva. Too bad. So we have only two pieces left. Let's try this one next, very clear. <laughs> I guess this is a cricket again. Today is a cricket's photography day. Cricket nymphs for photography day. Well, this one should be nice. I, I hope so. Compared to the last one, this one is in pristine condition. Clear piece with very decent long tail cricket. It's quite nicely positioned in the ember too. By the way, in real life I've never seen such tiny crickets anywhere. Where are they hiding? I'm seeing only adults in the fields. So yeah, you can't have too many crickets. Basically, crick crickets are more rare than, for example, flies in amber. But I'm just not taking too many flies to make a picture of the call because it would be flies all over the place. So instead we have crickets all over the place, I guess. So yeah, last but not least is this baby. And this one is the multi-inclusion piece. Two Coleoptera beetles and a earwing. And some nice patterns on the ember itself. Let's put it into a microscope and inspect it. Yes, this is very nice piece, but I'm having a lot of troubles with the light for the beetle specifically. Yes, you see, well, it's a dark beetle, there is no doubt about that, but it has big eyes and I want to light up the, the eyes, so, and I can't get it. If I try to put this LED light from the side, oh, look at this. We did light it up. Why? <laughs> was failing to do so before. Okay, that's nice. First insect in this piece is a irvik. It's generally nocturnal insect that hides during the day. They are mainly vegetarian scavengers, but occasionally they can nimble on other insects. And that behavior didn't change to the present day. Then we have two Coleopteras in one place. And one of them is very fancy looking, especially because of these cool antennas it possesses. I did get a suggestion from Mr. Artur Michalski that it's probably a Ptilodactylidae species. These beetles are generally associated with aquatic humid habitats. Adults are feeding on the fungi with its modified brush-like antennas. Very unique specimen. And there we go, 10 insect uh, great ember pieces is done and I think my favorite ones was the cicada and the last one, the beetle with super funky antennas. Yeah, so this was a great session, I'm quite happy with the results, I hope you did enjoy them too. If you did, smash that like button and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. I also do some uh, fossil uh, hunting and ember hunting and lots of different kind of content related to paleontology. So yeah, I hope you did enjoy this video, thanks for watching and bye!